Meet Paul Sparks, a humble man who just happens to be an artist. I'm just a spear fisherman. I'm, I'm, I make decoys, I sell decoys, but the bottom line is I'm a spear fisherman. Paul's basement is where he spends a lot of his free time, crafting functional works of art. They're not just, hey, it's a nice looking fish. If it's got an eye in it and it's mine, it's gonna swim. He's not in it for the money, because like many of us, he'd rather be fishing, or in this case, spearing. Because if you sat down and figured out what I sell them for and how much time I got in, I don't want to know I'm working for a penny an hour. <laughs> Come winter, this is Paul's home away from home, peering through a portal into an underwater world. It's nothing to see a five pound bass, and I know water distorts them, but I know what a five pound bass looks like. And the walleyes coming through, most walleye fishermen are fishing them in 17 feet of water. I've seen a lot of walleyes come through on the bottom in six feet of water. Joining him today is Paul's good friend, Jerry McCullough. And Jerry swears by Paul's decoys. They call in fish, boy, I, I can't believe how well they work. It's quite the adrenaline rush when they show up. Whether they come in slow or fast, it just, I don't know. I, been doing it for 32 years and I still haven't got tired of it. He didn't ruin any meat with that one. <laughs> the old saying is uh, keep your foot off the rope and run your decoys high. One year he decided to stop by the gathering in Purim, Minnesota, the National Fish Decoy Association's annual celebration of the art of the decoy. It's also a place where a world champ is crowned. Paul worked hard to get better, and this past year, he had a real shot to earn the top spot. The competition now is pretty tough, so they look at little details that'll, that'll move you up. It can move you up two, three places just by having this fin ray right. Looks are one thing. However, when it comes to making an effective decoy, the swim matters, and it just so happens the swim is Paul's strength. The road to the championship is long. Paul and his fellow competitors enter their works at various events throughout the winter because a point series is what decides the champion. It's a whole little subculture that people don't even know exists. We followed Paul to one of the events in Little Falls, Minnesota. You know, I just hope to place. I'd like to place in the top five. We'll see. We'll see, but it is it's a few butterflies, especially when it gets closer to announcement time. Events like this are much more than just a competition. It's about keeping a tradition alive. And people will say, you know, that uh, spearing is kind of barbaric, and, and I, say, I, I say it's more of a heritage thing. I personally haven't speared a, a fish over eight pounds in the last 10 years. The conservation ethic is not lost on spear fishermen. The Minnesota Dark House Association sprang up to kind of be a voice for spears and say, hey, wait a minute, this, this is a sport too. You, you, you can't take away our sport because we're just as legitimate as any other sport. We just take fish differently. But we're still conservationists. We're still, you know, fishermen. And when you look down that hole, the fish that swim in there aren't guppies. It's very exciting. I'm when just ex talking about it, I'm, the goosebumps are getting on my arm because it is so exciting. It, it's so visual. When you sit and stare at a bobber, you can go play cards. When you spear, you have to be focused. You have to pay attention. So these vendors that are here are carvers or dealers in sporting collectible art. And the competition, of course, is trying to keep alive the art of the decoy, the spearing, the fishing, and so forth. So the people like the Fishing Museum, the Minnesota Dark House Association, they're all sisters of ours, and we all work together. Some of the fish are so detailed, and they look absolutely just like, like you'd pull one out of the lake. And then you, go, you walk up to and you look, pick up another one, and it's got, you know, like maybe Dennis Bertram's, it's got the big lips on it. Or, you know, they're just, just amazing what people can do. Paul did pretty good in Little Falls, but up next was the gathering in Purim, Minnesota. 
I had butterflies and little falls when we last talked, and now they've turned into eagles because this is this is a grand. This is it. This is everything. All them months, everything on the line here. This was the 19th annual event, and it featured some of the legends of decoy carving. I'll sell a decoy even if I'm on on the camera here. <laughs> Larry Lang has been carving decoys for over 60 years. Don't be scared to buy a decoy. <laughs> The carvers are just a, such a nice bunch of guys. I, don't, I can't hardly name one that uh, wouldn't tell you everything you know is about, about making decoys, and I'm the same way. The future of the sport was on hand as well. I love it, it's fun. I've, I'm an outdoorsman, so doing this, it's, kinda, it's, it's really cool because you can make a piece of wood come alive, the way I think about it. With the judging complete, it was time for the big announcement. Would Paul be named a world champion? Missing first place by a mere 62 points from Audina, Paul Sparks. <laughs> Had a big run, buddy. Had a big run. Edging out Paul for the world championship was Eric Wallace. I'm fine. I mean, I competed against stiff competition, and I give it all I had and I'm very happy with, with second. You know, I'm competing against artists. Uh, like I told you before, just a spear guy that does this for fun. I had a pretty good ride. So when you think about spearing, keep in mind, it's not all about killing big fish. It's truly an art form and a tradition worth passing on.